Welcome back. As promised, I am now going to play the next lowest rated bot on my list, which is Nico from the United States, rated 800. Uh, the description says Nico is an American TikTok icon. Well, I'm nearly 50 and I've never been on TikTok, so I'll just uh, take their word for that. All right, let's choose Nico. Uh, let the computer choose the color and click play. Okay, we got the white pieces today. Oh, did you see that? It said, hola, boomer. Uh, just to clarify, I know kids like to call all the old people boomers, but boomers are my parents' generation. I'm Generation X. All right. Okay, this is the one, right? This is the one that I run into that if I play E4, that's what Stockfish tells me to play, but then they play D5 and we're in the French. I don't know anything about the French. As we saw from a previous video, I blundered that away in six or seven moves. So I'm going to stick with my guns here, the opening that I know. I don't think that's good. One thing I've learned from working my way up from the lower ratings is that bringing your queen out early is usually not a good idea. It becomes a target for lower uh, value pieces, two or three of which can sacrifice themselves for a queen. Also, in this case, the queen blocks their the normal development squares for other pieces. So I don't think that's good, but I don't know if we can do anything about it right now. I mean, I could develop a bishop here and then would the queen would just move over at that point. So I, I don't know if it's worth chasing it right now. I think I should go about my normal development. However, at this point in the London, my normal development square would be to put the bishop here. That's not a good idea. So I think I'm going to go ahead and play c3. Um, protecting this pawn, I think. Let's do that. Not sure because very few of my opponents play this since I have gotten above about 800. Um, okay, I don't think that's good either. It is getting a piece out and now my opponent can play this knight out in castle. However, this blocks the pawn directly behind it, which means that the light squared bishop is going to have trouble getting out. So I think my opponent has made two not very good moves in a row. But... Again, not sure how to punish it. Let's go ahead and play bishop to g5 and see where the queen goes. Okay. Well, the bot has blundered here by giving me the queen right off the bat. I will exchange my dark squared bishop for it. Um, and they didn't take back. So is this going to be another situation where the bot can't see one of my bishops? It seems like that's a pretty common bug in these bots. Um, normally in these setups, this dark squared bishop is kind of considered the bad bishop because I have pawns on dark squares uh, guarding a whole, a great number of dark squares. And of course this pawn's gonna come up at some point and guard another dark square. But here I just can get the rook. It looks like my opponent is not doing anything here. This knight can't go anywhere from there. So I will take the rook. Should I threaten the knight or should I offer a bishop trade? I think those are my two choices here. Another choice, because my bishop is not in danger down there on h8, is to go ahead with my development. But I think we might make quicker work of this bot if we pull this bishop out here. If it does take, it did not. But if it had taken here, I was going to exchange my knight for it so as not to mess up my pawn structure. Um, well, I'm just going to leave my bishop there for a moment. If the bot does challenge it with one of these pawns, I will pull it back to g3. And then right now I'm going to con continue with my normal development. Okay. That may be preparing a pawn push here, but I'm not too worried about that. Oh, I just realized on my previous turn that pawn was undefended. Okay. I could have won that pawn. 
So probably, uh, oh wait, no, I just I just played e3, so I couldn't have won the pawn. That was actually a good move on the bot's part, protecting it. Okay. Well, normally in these positions, we put our light squared bishop here, and I think that would be great in this case, because their h-pawn is not only undefended, but I don't think it can be defended. So I think we're going to win the h-pawn if nothing else happens. Okay. We can check, but in that case, the king would just move back. So I don't think it would be worth our time to check, would it? I think we're going to go ahead and take the h-pawn first, and then we can check. That way, when the king moves over, um, after that, we don't we won't have to worry about the knight coming back here because our light squared bishop will be on h7. I think. Okay. Now we can. Now I will check here, and that will I th just about permanently blockade that pawn, and that traps the king in these two squares because my bishop is cutting off these two. Okay, do I need to bring another piece to the party? Um, I can develop my last piece, I can castle. I'm not sure exactly what's best here, I just know that with the way these pawns are set up, this bishop is effectively cutting off the king. And this bishop really can't go anywhere right now except basically all the way back. But I don't think they can keep us from doing that, so I'm going to go ahead and castle. Prepare to get this rook into the game here. Okay, that is not really a threat, but that keeps the rook from defending this pawn. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring my light squared bishop back to d3, which is where it likes to be in these positions because of the two diagonals that it controls. And in this case, my opponent has made no move to protect their b pawn, which I can now capture with check. They will have to block with either the bishop or the pawn. I think the pawn would be the better block there. And then I can pull my bishop back or trade it off for the knight. I don't know which would be better. Let's see. Check. Yeah, they, the king can't move right now, or couldn't move because the both bishops were blocking off all those squares. But now I have the choice of trading for the knight, which I don't think is good because the bishop will take back and be aiming at my rook, then I'll have to move my rook. I think at this point it would be better just to pull my bishop back, which locks this pawn in place. Because the king can't, ah, the king could move here, couldn't it? And then get out, yeah. But still, that's pretty good because it temporarily locks that pawn in place. And there's no b-pawn now to ever come after my bishop. Oh. Okay, the knight has gone back. Uh, I can develop this knight to go after that bishop, maybe? Or I could get the other knight out, finally, and figure out where it wants to go. Let's do that. Okay, this bishop has come back to come after my rook. I can defend that multiple ways. One is the obvious way of moving the rook over, which I kind of wanted to do anyway because we want to start pushing in the center. I could also block with this pawn, which is defended by the knight, but that could fall prey to some sort of thing there. So I just want to get the rook onto the better square, the square that it would it belongs on anyway. Okay, finally they're coming after this bishop. Let's see, if I move the bishop back one to g5, directly threatening the knight. The knight could go, whoops, the knight could go back to its original square. It could go here to f5, or it could go here. So it's got multiple choices. 
Um, but the bishop will be temporarily safe right there. I think. Let's let's just do that for now and see what happens. Okay, this bishop has snuck inside here for some reason. You know what I just saw? We back up one one move. When they came here threatening this bishop, they undefended this pawn. That knight back there on b8 was defending their c pawn. And I could have taken it, and that would have then penned the knight to the king, and it couldn't have taken my dark squared bishop. But since, can I not move one move at a time? Why is, okay, sorry, for the, some reason I clicked the arrow and it did both moves. When I did that, it did get this bishop out of danger. But that pawn's still undefended. And then they played bishop to d3, which doesn't really do anything. It keeps my rook from moving over to the b to b1, but I wasn't about to do that. Uh, but now I think I can just take this pawn. Okay. And I think. The bishop, both bishops are temporarily safe. I could trade this one off right now because I am up a significant amount of material. I could also get this knight out, which threatens this bishop with my queen. And the getting this knight out prepares when I trade this bishop here, then that knight would have another pawn. So I'm going to do that and see what they do. Okay, they pulled that bishop back. That bishop was more important to them uh, than the pawn. So that's good thinking on the bot's part. But now that I have my rook here, I think it's time to start advancing these pawns. Okay. Well, that does threaten the bishop, but it undefended this pawn. And if I go there to capture, then it will be protecting my bishop. So let's do that. OK, it went back. Um, one thing I could do now is trade this off. And when they take, then I can bring the knight back. Or I could just defend the knight right now. Let's try that. Sorry, I bumped the mic. Okay, where's that knight going? Is it just getting out of danger? I'm not sure. Oh, it's, it's protecting this, isn't it? Maybe. Well, now that I've moved my e pawn, I can bring the bishop back if I want. Maybe reroute it this way or something. I know I shouldn't be quite so uh, protective of my pieces because I am up a lot of material, but. It's just habit, and it's a good habit to be in. Even if you are at material, there's no reason to be wasteful of it. But I do see that that knight protects an f-pawn push, which would threaten my bishop. I'm going to take here first, trade this one off, and then I will get the dark squared bishop out of the way. Check. Okay, I figured they would take there, and then uh, I will bring this bishop back All the way to its home square okay the king has moved up where I can check it but I also want to start getting uh, start breaking in the center my problem is this if I if I play e5 now I think 
my opponent will just play d5 and and then our pawns will be locked in here like this which I think would be okay but so I'm gonna hold off on that is what I'm saying I'm gonna play a4 so this bishop can go behind there okay that's not pointing at anything important I'm gonna put this bishop right here so it will be pointing at the king when I play this pawn move that's not pointing at anything either I don't think um, let's let's check first and then we'll play the B pawn okay I, I'll just start marching pawns down here I'm really I really have no idea what they're doing but I'm going to trade my knight for that bishop okay and then uh, and then I'm going to start advancing these pawns yeah that doesn't do anything because that's protected in fact that quit defending this pawn so let's take that pawn okay and now we can defend the bishop with this pawn and Oh, we can check right here. How about that? Okay. Sorry, I'm looking around the board trying to figure out what's best here. I I really don't know. Okay, yeah, that rook's running out of squares, and now I have won the rook with this fork. Check. When I was younger, if I noticed that I had more material, I would do what I used to call CPR, which it was an acronym for Continuous Piece Removal. Uh, that was my strategy for winning just clear off as many of the enemy pieces or opponent pieces off the board as I could and uh, and then they really couldn't stop me and that's kind of what I was doing here um, I'm going to try to trade off for this bishop now and then I just have way too much here I have all these I have five connected past pawns so I'm just going to push them and uh, I don't even know what order is best. That's just what I'm going to do. Okay. Um, I think that's a mistake. Oh, wow. I should have checked before I made that move to make sure it wasn't a stalemate. <laughs> <laughs> because my queen cuts off all these squares and my bishop cuts off that square. Yeah, I should have checked before I made that move. Well, uh, right now, I think I think we can take this. And now the king has its moves. But this is a check. And then, where's my mate? Where is the mate? Because that's not mate. That's not mate. And I want to make sure and leave them some legal moves. Okay, that leaves them a legal move because, okay, there and or they could have gone here as well. Uh, that's still open square, so I'm going to bring my rook up and we'll try to checkmate this way. Okay. That took me longer than it should have 52 moves against an 800 rated bot even though the bot gave me the queen as we saw in I don't know move five or six so let's run the game review and see what it says wow it says I played with 92.8 percent accuracy which I is one of the better scores I've had against the bots I was feeling bad because it took me 53 moves to meet to beat this bot but um, it says I did not have any mistakes or blunders or missed wins only two inaccuracies 
Whereas over on the other side, uh, it says the bot has three inaccuracies, one mistake, and one blunder. Uh, let's just run the review. Okay, that was our book moves, and then the queen came out, which was a mistake. Oh, it says it was inaccurate for me to play c3. Does it want me to have played bishop to g5 now? No, that wasn't what it was asking for. Uh, when those dots run, that means it was asking for something else. It says that's good. You win time by threatening a piece, forcing it to retreat. Well, that's what I was thinking, but I was also thinking it would just maybe move here because it wouldn't retreat. That would lose the queen, and it wouldn't come forward, but it would be safe temporarily there, and it would have been safe there. So that wasn't it. What move was it looking for? It wanted me to play e4 now. Well, as we've already discussed, I was not going to play e4 because that would transpose into the French. And I'm very bad at that. So I wasn't going to do that. So bishop. So my best move that I would have played would have been bishop to g5. Okay, next. That was inaccurate. Does it want f4 again? I mean e4? Yes, it wants e4 again. It says that's the best. Now see here I wouldn't... I probably would have played it just because I I did notice during the game that that bishop move blocked in their d pawn, so then it would not transpose into the French, and also here I would be threatening a pawn fork. Okay, so there I should have played e4, but of course that wasn't a great move. That was the only new move that made any sense once they left their queen hanging. It says you should end up winning material after the right captures. What? That was the right capture, and I won a ton of material. There was only one good move, and you found it. Okay, that's a little bit excessive for when the opponent leaves their queen under attack, and you just take it. But anyway, uh, what's what's next? Was that it? Those were my two inaccuracies? Okay. Well, it took me a while, and it from the symbols that are showing up on the board, it looks like I played my best move most of the time. Okay, so my guess is that the the bot played pretty well after that early mistake, after losing it, the queen to that blunder. It played pretty well because other uh, you saw how many times I had the little green star there, which means best move, according to Stockfish. Uh, and no more mistakes or blunders. So uh, the bot played well after giving me the queen. But anyway, uh, we'll move on to the next bot. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.